final from Boston where it was a blowout. 102-82. Look, the Heat did not make a shot until 3 minutes and 22 seconds left in the first quarter. The longest drought without a field goal to start any playoff game over the last 25 years. Like, Miami was historically bad. It gets worse. Heat starters combined for 18 points. The fewest points by a team starters in a playoff game since 1971. That's when uh, starters were tracked in 1971. And there's more. Victor Oladipo by himself outscored the entire Heat starters. He was playing for Tyler here. He was getting more minutes, right? He had 23 points. The Heat starters, as I mentioned, had 18. It's the first playoff game that an entire starting lineup was outscored by a player from its bench since starters were first tracked in 1971. I mean, you, this is this is just this. You flush this game down the toilet if you're the Miami Heat. You get ready for Game Five for the Celtics. You bounce back. You tie the series up at two games apiece. Now a perfect 5-0 and following a loss this postseason. All right, let's so welcome in former NBA Coach of the Year Avery Johnson as a player helped the Spurs win a title in 1999. Avery, the Heat missed their first 14 shots. This game felt like it was over after the first quarter. I mean, was this over after the first quarter? Well, I wouldn't say it was over, but boy, they had the looks of it. And to pile on a little bit more with your stats, the Heat starters scored 18 points. The Celtics starters st scored 73 points. So just do the math. And they were severely outplayed. The Celtics came to play. We talked about it, you and I, Hakeem, in our pregame uh, analysis and breakdown that Boston had to get off the quick start, get in the fast lane, take care of the basketball. They only had nine turnovers tonight. Uh, but the big thing that they did tonight was, man, they dominated the Heat at the free throw line. Who would have ever thought in a game of this magnitude that Boston in this game would go 32 for 38 from the free throw line and the Heat would go 8 for 14. You can never get uh, have any fast break points if your rebounding free throw makes and, and Boston took care of the basketball. So give it credit to Boston. We said Tatum needed to have a big game. He responded. But uh, this game got... Celtics got control of this game in the first quarter and never looked back. Is this a situation where we're going to hear from Eric Spolstra and he goes, well, there was a there was a there was a discrepancy at the free throw line. I'm not going to say anything here, but there was a there was a free throw line. We, were, we didn't get the free throw line as much as they there's a discrepancy here. I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying something. No, not tonight. Okay. I would be shocked uh, based on the way this game played out. Uh, the Celtics were a more aggressive team. The Miami fouled. They fouled. They were reaching. They were grabbing. They were out of position. Whenever you're out of position and you're late and you're not in a legal guarding position, you're going to get called for those fouls. The Celtics were much stronger with the basketball tonight. Uh, Miami didn't have nearly as many deflections. And the byproduct of that was the Celtics had more of a complete game even though they didn't need as many threes because they were so dominant from the free throw line. But I would be shocked. Eric Spolster's focus should be on, hey, how can we get Jimmy Butler to score, you know, at least 20 points in the game? You know, what's going to happen with, with Kyle Lowry? P.J. Tucker is not even looking at the basket. Bam Adebayo went from scoring 30 points to nine points. They got a lot of other bigger problems than the free throw discrepancy. Yeah, and they didn't even have to deal with, with Marcus Smart in this game. The defensive player of the year was out. And so, and they they still limited the Heat starters to 18 points. Is that sometimes though a result of like, hey, Spolstra says, look, we don't have it this game. I'm pulling the starters. I'm getting the bench some minutes, so it's gonna look more inflated than it really was. Yeah, and absolutely. And he made the right decision because at some point you get to a point of no return. I've been in those situations before. You got it. You owe it to your team to start looking towards the next game. You're not a quitter. You're not necessarily giving up, but you are in some ways. But it's time to move on. Get those bench guys some more confidence. Victor Oladipo looked good tonight. And they're going to need him, especially if Tyler Hero is not going to be available uh, for the next game. They're going to need a spark at home going back to their home crowd. Now it's a three-game series. And we'll see if, if Miami can protect their home court. If they can protect their home court, We'll see them in the NBA Finals. If they can't, then then it's going to be problem. It's going to be problematic for them uh, because now all Boston has to do is steal one um, at, in Miami and 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 protect their home court. 
And we talked about Jason Tatum pregame. We talked about he wore the T-shirt with a photo of Michael Jordan on the front of it. We said, look, you better have a big game if you're rocking an MJ T-shirt. He bounced back 10 points in game three, goes for 31 points in game four, 14 of them coming from the free throw line. What did you see from Tatum in game four as the Celtics respond here? Well, I just saw a guy that, that wanted to play like a superstar. You know, he, he did a great job. He talked in the post game about Al Horford's leadership, but his leadership was critically important. And the way he finished around the basket, he wasn't just settling for threes. He was looking to play inside the paint, mixed up his game, got to the free throw line. But I, I just thought, you know, in terms of him, you know, playing at all three levels, he did a really nice job, attacked the mismatch. Uh, and then defensively, you know, he held his own. He didn't need much help on the defensive end, even against a guy like Jimmy Butler. He did an amazing job, and he looked like a superstar two-way player and not just that offensive juggernaut that can get 30 or 40 points. He was really superb on both ends of the floor tonight. He's much better following a loss as well, Jason Tatum, averaging nearly uh, 12 points better following a loss. Uh, he's been outstanding this postseason for Boston. And the Celtics are now 5-0 and following a loss this postseason. Is that just a nice trend that, that we in the media get caught up with? Or, or is there something to that? I think there's something to it. There's something to it in, in a way that, you know, when this team really has an embarrassing performance, there's something about their intestinal fortitude and their tenacity and the way they can recalibrate uh, and, and get back on track uh, within a 24, 48 hour period. That says something about your leadership, your coaching. Uh, guys are not dropping their heads. They're able to flush a bad performance out of their system and get back on track, get off to a good start in the next game. So extraordinary leadership. That goes to not just Jason Tatum, but guys like Marcus Smart, whether he's in the lineup or not, Al Horford uh, in their defense. They won this game. Uh, tonight with their defense, and that's how they bounce back. Series all tied up two games apiece now, best of three. Who do you like to represent the East in the finals? Well, I'm sticking with the Heat. I, I picked them to win in seven games. Uh, I don't know which Heat team's going to show up. Don't know who's going to be in uniform. <laughs> Who knows? Kyle Lowry may or may not even play the next game. We, we've been getting these daily reports with guys in and out of the lineup. I do know this. I need to see something from Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, you know, after that first game, we basically, you know, was putting him on the Mount Rushmore of uh, uh, playoffs. Need to see it from Jimmy Butler. I'm talking about an extraordinary performance. They got to have it in game five, protect their home court. But this series is tracking just the way I predicted it. And uh, we'll, we'll see a game seven. And, we'll, and it's just a matter of which team is going to have their an extraordinary performance or if somebody's going to have a, Phoenix Suns uh, type of a performance in game seven, which we as uh, NBA fans, we don't want to see that type of performance again. All right. Have no fear. Miami Heat fans, Avery Johnson predicting Miami in seven games. All right. We'll see <laughs> game five back in Miami on Wednesday. Avery, appreciate the breakdown here on HQ. Thanks. As we mentioned, uh, the Celtics are awesome following a loss this postseason, a perfect five and oh following a loss. And, Look, Avery said there's something to it. You know, they're, they're going to bounce back. They're going to find a way to respond. And that is what they have done this postseason. Really a testament to their character. Really a testament to what kind of team this is in terms of how they've been built. And a, a lot of their character and a lot of their ability to be able to come back when at times it looks pretty, uh, doesn't look great. You know, when, when Jimmy Butler goes for 41 in game one, you're like, all right, well, the Heat are going to win this series. And then Boston responds. They lose game three, Boston responds. So here they are once again as, uh, as they respond in game four. Again, game five coming your Wednesday, uh, way Wednesday back in Miami. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.